Good morning. Today is Sunday, November 13th, 2022. The year is uh, getting shorter and coming to a close. Uh, as you know, we turned our time back last week, so now we a lot darker in the evening. So uh, enjoy your days as Christmas is coming on. This is our online Sunday school lesson for Ace of Hill Baptist Church from Anderson, South Carolina. Uh, as for the last couple of years, it's Johnny Smith trying to share this lesson with you. Uh, the title of this week's lesson is Leaders Are Needed. Uh, the teacher's book, I think, give this following explanation. Ungodly leadership will lead to God's wrath. The teacher's book also offered some food for thought this week for this lesson as we begin to study uh, in the book of Micah. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles. You're going to need your Bibles this week as I introduce the book of Micah and also as we study from chapter 3. Uh, but the food for thought for this lesson was this. Leaders of people will be held accountable for their actions and their decisions that they make for the people under their leadership. Uh, Micah was a prophet uh, born in the southern kingdom of Judah. Uh, Micah was a prophet at the same time as Isaiah was a prophet in Judah and Hosea was a, a prophet in the northern kingdom of Israel. Micah, by most Bible scholars, was the author of this book uh, that is entitled with his name, uh, Micah was a prophet, in, and we're going to learn this today under King Jotham, King Ahaz, and King Hezekiah. The name Micah means he is he who is like God. Micah was from and lived in Judah, but spoke to the ten tribes of Israel as well as the people in the two tribes in Judah. So with me this morning, uh, if you got your Bibles ready, if you don't, pause this lesson and go get your Bibles and come back. Uh, Micah comes after the book of Jonah, which we studied a few weeks ago. And it's considered one of the minor prophets uh, over toward the end of the Old Testament. Uh, turn with me to Micah chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Moresheth in the days of Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. The word of the Lord came to Micah, so God was calling Micah to be his voice, his prophet. This verse further says Micah lived in Moresheth. Uh, today, uh, we learned that that could be called Moresheth Goth, uh, which was a village in the lower part of Judah located about 20 miles southwest of Jerusalem. The names of the kings direct us to the exact time and the exact kings that he was preaching to uh, during his tenure as a prophet for God. He makes it clear he is preaching to Israel uh, and to the capital in Samaria. He's also preaching to Judah and to the capital in Jerusalem. So now we have... Micah introduced. Turn with me now to verse 2 in chapter 1. And let's start out with the message uh, that Micah is presented uh, by God. It says, Hear, all you peoples, listen, O earth, and all that is in it. Let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. Micah says this word from the Lord comes to him to preach to the sinners in Israel and to the sinners in Judah, as well as to the sinners everywhere for now and forever. Why do we study the Old Testament, the Old Testament message? Uh, why do we dig and, and study? And I've shared with you how hard it is for me to understand uh, some of the wording and some of the timing uh, in the Old Testament because you have to understand the history of the Bible to understand the New Testament, which we enjoy so much. Uh, also, we have to study this Old Testament uh, message because it's still prevalent to us today. Micah says the Lord from his temple is giving words to him to preach 
to preach both to Israel and to Judah. Now turn with me Micah chapter 1, verses 3, 4, and 5. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place. He will come down and tread on the high places of the earth. The mountains will melt under him, and the valleys will split like wax before the fire, like waters poured down upon a steep place. All this for the transgression of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? After calling out the sins for the people of Israel and Judah, Micah turns with the word of God and calls out to the leaders uh, and to the people of Israel and to Judah. As we studied in Hosea, God is having Micah preach to all of Israel and to Judah. Verse 5 says, Your sins, Samaria, Jerusalem, Israel, Judah, your idol worship, your false sacrifices, are in the house of Israel, and they're in the high places of Judah. Both Israel and Judah have become corrupt in God's eyes. Their sins had angered God. They had gone away from their first love, God. This includes the ten tribes of Israel and the two tribes that were located in Judah. Then in verses 6 and 7, Therefore I will make Samaria a heap of ruins in the field, places for planting a vineyard. I will pour down her stones into the valley and I will uncover her foundations. All her carved images shall be beaten to pieces, and all her pay as a harlot shall be burned with the fire. All her idols I will lay desolate, for she gathered it from the day of a harlot, and they shall return to the pay of a harlot. What is God going to do to Israel and Judah? Listen to this. For their sins, God promises he was, and I got three things here. One, make Samaria a heap of destruction. Samaria, God says, was going to be destroyed, and it would look like barren land. Number two, he's going to destroy all the graven images, all the idols. And all these images and idols will be like dust or dirt and turn to nothing. He says he's also the third thing going to destroy your enemies. Those you call friends upon to come and help you in war. They also brought idol worship. I'm going to destroy them also for bringing the idols to you, Israel, and to Judah. Now we move over into chapter 3, which is today's lesson, and we find out after he talks to the people of Israel and talks to them for their sins, God has a message. God has a message for the leaders of Israel and for Judah. And he says over here in chapter 3 in the first three verses, And I said, meaning God, Hear now, O heads of Jacob, and ye rulers of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know justice? You who hate good and love evil, who strip the skin from my people and the flesh from their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people, flay their skin from them, break their bones, and chop them in pieces like meat for the pot, like flesh in the cauldron. In chapter 3 now we move uh, to what Micah says. He's calling out the sins for the people of Israel and Judah. But now he turns with the word of God and calls out the leaders of Judah and Israel. When he says, hear now, O heads of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel. He's calling out the sins for these leaders, for the things that they stand for and for not following the word of God in their action. Micah turns with the word of God and calls out the leaders of Judah and Israel. 
He calls out the leaders of Israel and Judah for their unrighteous leadership and their sins. In Bible times, just as it is today, leaders have the responsibility of leading in righteousness and righteous leadership, setting an example of God's laws and defending the cause of the weak and the oppressed. Once again, as we studied and I mentioned in Hosea, God tells Micah to ask the leaders a question. Does God know the answer to this question? Of course, he knows it before he asks the question. But he asks, is it right for you to rule with an evil rule? Who lead by plucking away the people's freedoms? Who sit in ivory towers taking money from the poor and chopping down the people under you who are trying to just live their own livelihood? Leaders were supposed to love good, love God, love the church, and hate evil. But they were imitating and following evil leadership. They were following idols. Leaders are to imitate and follow God's laws. Instead, Israel and Judah's leaders acted like bloodthirsty cannibals. Micah used inhumane words of gory detail to describe their leaders and what they were doing to the people. Their leaders skinned the people. Their leaders stripped their flesh from their bones. Their leaders broke their bones. The leaders chopped them up like meat for a cooking pot. Their leaders ate the flesh of the people. Probably most likely they didn't do this. These were figurative expressions, but God was angry. He used the uh, sound of making a stew of the people that they were to lead and to love. The leaders of Israel and Judah had become so evil, they even delighted in what they were doing. As I began studying this lesson this week, and most of you know I study for a lot, uh, and it was early in the week before the midterm elections on Tuesday. Uh, as we all know, the national elections were held Tuesday. So on Tuesday, my wife and I went to vote. As we were standing there waiting in line to vote, I had time to think over the last two years. I asked myself a few questions about the leadership we have over us now here in the United States for the last two years. And I wrote down here seven things that I asked myself while I stood there. Our leader has destroyed energy production in less than two years in causing us to have a shortage for the things we need, need to heat with and move our cars. Our leader has raised the price of the very food we eat and all that we can get at the grocery store. Our leaders have passed new laws in hopes of making killing babies legal. Our leaders have destroyed many people's jobs by the executive orders that they have passed. Our leaders have given money away with no regard to the people who had to give up their money from buying food and medicine that they needed to give their hard-earned money to the government for them to give away to people that don't deserve to be given money. They have put woke policies in our schools. They've demoralized our children. The leaders we've had over the last two years have been leading exactly as the leaders in Micah's time. They were so after money and power for themselves, they rule like the evil leaders of Judah and Israel. As I stood in line to vote this week, I prayed, please, Lord, give us back God-led leaders to lead our country and unite our leaders and people to your ways. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I prayed till I was able to vote and I cast my vote. Now turn with me to Micah chapter three, verse four. He's talking to the leaders of Israel and Judah. Then they will cry to the Lord 
but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time because they have been evil in their deeds. I couldn't help but think the leaders of Israel and Judah, he called them evil. The leaders of our country are evil. Micah says the leaders of Judah and Israel had become so evil they, when they cried out finally to the Lord and realized that they needed help from the Lord, they cried out to the Lord for help from the things that they had done and the evil ways they had lived. But it, the Bible says the Lord had closed his ears to them. The Lord promised no mercy for them. The Bible promises judgment and justice to those who lead other people in evil ways. I believe the leaders who led evil will receive their judgment and justice. It will come from the Lord. In the meantime, our hope as Christian people is to study our Bible more, to get to know the Lord better, and to renew our relationship with the Lord and strengthen that relationship. Our hope is to hope and follow God and let Him give out the justice to the evil people. The leaders in Micah's time had become so evil, they were acting as if they, did, they even were devoted to God. The Lord called this hypocrisy. The teacher's book asked a hypothetical question to close out this section. Which is worse, an ungodly leader or a leader that does not know how to lead at all? The next section of our lesson the teacher's book entitled Corrupt Prophets. It comes from Micah chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who make my people stray, who chant peace while they chew with their teeth, but who prepare our war against him, who puts nothing into their mouths. Therefore you shall have night without vision, and you shall have darkness without divination. The sun shall go down on the prophets, and the day shall be dark for them. So the seers shall be ashamed, and the diviners are diviners abashed. Indeed, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression, and to declare to Israel, their sins. As I was studying this week, I found a good explanation for these verses. Let me share what I found in my study this word week, and I'm going to share this word for word uh, as I was gather, gathering this from a Bible study online. What I found that helped me understand these verses about corrupt prophets, prophets that lead people in evil or in error against the word of God. Matthew 7 chapter 15 says, Beware of false prophets which will come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are like ravenous wolves. Then Matthew chapter 15 verse 14, Let them alone, God says, they be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. What shall happen to these leaders and to these evil prophets? Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1 says, There were false prophets among the people, even as there will be false prophets among you, who shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon them swift destructions. God will not overlook sinful prophets. He says, I will be their judge. I will be their prophet. I will do the punishing. I saw an article this week on Facebook and someone published it and was talking to the leader of our country that he must, uh, he must one day stand before God and be judge for his actions. I said, <laughs> That's so true. Here in these verses, Micah says, prophets are called to carry out and live in the Lord's ways 
and be an example to the people that they lead. Our deacons are called to carry out on God's work, to study God's work, to be at the services of the Lord, and to understand God's ways, to set the example for others to follow. Verse 7 talks about sayers or seers. Uh, in Bible times, seers were prophets and were generally thought as the ones who could pray, call on God, and receive answers from God for the people. Because the seers or the prophets had become so evil, Micah preached the people can no longer hear from God because of their evilness. However, verse 8 says, Thank God again. Micah says and preaches, I'm the one which God sent. I am full of God's spirit and his power. I am sharing with you what God says. It is because of God that I am preaching to Judah about their transgressions and to Israel about their sins. Finally, we get some hope where it says responsibility is declared. Micah chapter 3, verses 9 through 12. Now hear this, ye heads of the house of Jacob and the rulers of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build up Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with iniquity. Her heads judge for a bribe, her preach teach for pay, and her money divine for profit. Yet they lean on the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? No harm can come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be plowed like a field. Jerusalem shall become heaps of ruins and the mountain of the temple like the bare hills of the forest. So Micah preaches from God. He begins his preaches, preaching to the leaders of Israel and Judah, the evil leaders of Israel and Judah. Hear me, I pray, he says. He preaches not just to the people, but to the leaders and to the evil prophets. They should set an example for the people that they lead or the people that they profit to. You see, some were changing the word of the Lord to fit their needs and preaching this to their families. As I studied, I couldn't help but this week how... Uh, over the last few years, I've heard even today how some churches are taking the Word of God and rewriting it to allow changes to support their liberal lifestyles. The Bible says what is sin. The Bible says what is not sin. But yet some people today are redefining what are sins and what are not sins. Some of these people have even suggested some words in the Bible are in error when they don't fit the world we live in today. Let me say this right now. The Bible has no error. The Bible has been here for over 2,000 years. The Bible will be here until Jesus comes again. There's no error. It's inerrant and it's infallible. It will never change. What God called sins over 2,000 years ago is still sin today. Killing babies is a sin, and we need to take a stand against it. For those politicians that take a stand for killing babies, God be with you. God will be your judge. Some prophets today, some false prophets, have even took to rewriting some words in the Bible and called it a new Bible. Then these people expect God to bless them after they pervert the Bible. I would never change a single word of the Bible because there's no error. Micah con concludes this chapter 3 with a word of judgment. Micah says disaster will come to these evil people and it will come because of them. God's judgment was coming and nothing would be spared. The farms, the cities, even the temple was going to be laid to waste. Israel was going to be destroyed. Judah was going to be destroyed. History tells us that which Micah predicted 
through God and foretold actually happened. Listen, the northern capital of Israel and it, the northern country of Israel and its capital Samaria was actually laid to waste in 772 B.C. by the Assyrians. The southern kingdom of Judah and its capital, Jerusalem, was laid to waste in 586 B.C., a little later than Israel, but by the Babylonians, and it included destroying the temple. Next week, we will continue our study in Micah and study about how some hope for Israel and Judah is shared by the prophet Micah. For today, let me ask you to continue to pray for Brother Ern, pray for Brother Mark, pray for Brother Johnny, pray for Sister Patsy. I uh, had a special request during our Sunday school last week. Pray for those families right now that uh, seem to be having uh, bad luck, seem to be thinking that maybe God's not listening to them. Uh, we all know God is listening to us. We all know God hears our prayers. But yes, sometimes we get the feeling and we get down. Uh, give some encouragement is what I'm praying today to those people that have been praying uh, for relief, for help, for things in their financial situations, for people in their families. Uh, I pray for those that I've been praying for to get saved. I pray for our church every day that we can actually be a church united and stand for God's ways. So during this holiday season, as Thanksgiving is approaching, as Christmas is approaching, I pray God right now that you'll hear our prayers, that you'll send encouragement to those people right now that seem to be down, that always trust in you, Lord, but things seem to be going the wrong way. I pray for the leadership of our church, the leadership of our city, the leadership of our county, the leadership of our state, and the leadership of our country. Lord, we pray in some way that revival will take off uh, in the leaders of our country, that these leaders that continue to promote evil ways according to your word, Lord, we pray that you'll remove them from their offices, uh, if it's from our church all the way up to our country, Lord, we pray that you will help those people to understand you better in your ways, to trust your Bible and study it more, uh, to set an example for us who work every day to try to make a living and try to survive as we wait before Jesus to come back again. We thank you for Jesus that he died for our sins that he went to an old rugged cross and he give us a way out and give us our hope. This is the only hope we have today that Jesus will take care of our sins and blot them out. We pray for those, especially that we mentioned that sick today. We pray to you'll bless each one of them, Lord. Continue to give them strength each day, Lord, and always we pray in your will. For it's in your name we pray, amen. We'll talk to you next week. Y'all have a good week.